Cleveland pulls off a major upset win over the 49ers at home. 19-17 is the final score after Jake Moody misses the potential game-winning 41-yard field goal. Let me tell you, the wind was working for the home team in this one as that was Moody's second miss of the game. Dustin Hopkins did have one miss as well, but Dustin Hopkins made all the ones that he had to. I do know the Browns got a couple of uh, you know, if he calls going their way on what was their game-winning drive, so before, if any Niners fans want to bombard me with that, I do understand they got the benefit of the whistle a little bit. However, I do feel like this was the kind of game where both teams can point to examples of the Zebras kind of screwing them over. In some instances, there are plenty of plenty of bad officiating to go around for both teams. The officials just stunk all game. What didn't stink all game was the Browns defense. 49ers defense was also pretty good too. Uh, the main story coming in was Deshaun Watson out for another game after he was at, at first expected to, to return for this game. But as the game got closer and closer, it appeared that that wasn't the case. PJ Walker announced, I believe on Thursday, as for when he would come in. Joel Batonio down as well for the Browns. And San Francisco also getting more and more injured as the game went on. You had De both Debo Samuel and Christian McCaffrey forced out of this game due to injury throughout the contest. Trent Williams also left and came back. Who knows how much he was hampered leaving with an injury and having to uh, return with a, with a taped up ankle. And after a sloppy first drive from the Browns defense, Browns defense really hunkered down for pretty much the rest of the game and they definitely needed to it could have been 14 to nothing pretty quickly after a pj walker interception to fred warner i wouldn't necessarily necessarily say that pj walker had a good game he did have a couple of pretty bad interceptions but he did show that he was capable of moving the ball on on the offense which was something that dtr just didn't really show much against baltimore uh, but early on once the defense settled in the issue did become that the offense was still having to work back from a 10-0 deficit, but then Amari Cooper breaking free after his defender fell down. Uh, Amari Cooper wide open, P.J. Walker hit him in stride. That set the Browns up in good position in the second quarter. Ended that drive with actually a good Stefanski trick play. I get, you know, that doesn't happen all too often. Looked like it was going to be a Harrison Bryant quarterback sneak, but he pitched it to Kareem Hunt, caught the defense a little bit off guard. That went for a touchdown. Halftime is upon, upon us with Cleveland trailing 10-7, to feeling that the game was definitely much closer than first anticipated when the game started. Cleveland did take some good momentum into the second half, starting with a field goal drive to tie the game. Then Martin Emerson getting an interception on, on the next third down. Browns looking like they're definitely going to uh, storm for the lead soon, but then there was a holding on an already bad play on an Elijah Moore end around. 49ers do a good job of creating negative plays to force the Browns to punt. I do think they kind of... Uh, Stop their own, their own momentum by calling an Elijah Moore end around that the 49ers definitely ready for. Uh, but the Browns force a punt of their own, and the 49ers got an unsportsmanlike on the punt return for the gunner running out of bounds and not getting back in bounds quick enough, setting the Browns up in good field position again. This time, actually getting the field goal and taking the lead, which felt like an impossibility when the first quarter started. And that's when it felt like Cleveland actually started to take control of the game a little bit. The 49ers defense still keeping the Browns offense in check, but the Browns defense doing the same thing with the 49ers, except this time the Browns have the lead. Then a big gain for the Brown on, on a tight end screen to Njoku was called back due to Jed Wills being like five yards down the field. Following play is, a, is the second P.J. Walker interception. Just a pretty bad throw on P.J. Walker's, on PJ Walker's uh, fault there. San Francisco for scoring on the first play of that drive deep in Browns territory to take a four-point lead. And now this Browns offense that has been uh, hot and cold and mostly kind of chilled out has to score points in the fourth quarter. Cleveland would then go on a long, impressive drive on offense, including a fourth and four conversion on the San Francisco 40. A nice quick throw to David Bell by Walker. But they, they do only get a field goal out of it, still, still trailing in the game by one at that point. Then Shanahan just inexplicably going all passing on the 49ers next drive with, you know, you have the lead, you have less than five minutes in the game, you might want to keep the ball on the ground, at least make the Browns think about using their timeouts, but they just try to throw it through the air and nothing really going there, leading to a punt with pretty much no time taking off the clock, the Browns still able to have their timeouts, and then we get to what was the Browns winning drive that I mentioned uh, at the beginning of the video. I honestly kind of thought that the game was going to be written in stone once PJ Walker had that incomplete pass to the end zone that probably should have been picked off, you get the obligatory Kareem Hunt run to make the 49ers use a timeout and then Justin Hopkins with the, with the chip shot field goal to make it 19 to 17. I thought it was going to be one a 20 to 19 heartbreaker in fashion because with where the 49ers are 
and that them being that the 5-0 and team, the best team in the NFL, you just knew they were going to put themselves in a position to get that game-winning field goal, even though the Browns' defense had been stifling them all second half. Teams like the 49ers find a way to just drive the ball down. Yeah, they got a pass interference call, but that was the same call that Mar Amari Cooper got on the Browns' drive before, so I have no qualms with that pass interference call to get them that first down. Uh, Brandon Ayuk with a good run after catch, although I do think Thornhill and, Del and Delpit kind of over-pursued after Emerson forced him back inside, but uh, Ayuk got the yardage that he needed to. And the 49ers did set themselves up pretty well to uh, win the game, a 41-yard field goal, especially for the young season that Jake Moody is having, definitely seemed very makeable. But again, like I, like I said at the beginning of the video, the wind was definitely working for the home team in this one. Sometimes it's better to be a little bit lucky than good. And, you know, it, it is said that you do need luck to in order to be good. It does require a little bit of both if you want to have a magic season. And for this game, it was yet, yet another case of the Browns defense really keeping them in a game that the offense just wasn't really taking control over. Uh, th this this Browns team will go as far as this defense takes them, I think. You know, even with Deshaun Watson in there, I, I do feel like the premier unit is going to be the Browns defense. I am so much more excited to see Jim Schwartz's unit out there on the field than I am with Kevin Stefanski's. I, I think I've never felt that way about any team's defense about uh, and any team's offense quite like this year's Browns team. I don't know if the Browns defense is going to be like all-time great or anything, but for this season, this year, so far through f through five games, they are definitely an elite squad. I believe it, I saw uh, a stat from CBS Sports saying that they're the first team to only allow so many yards it's like a little bit more than a thousand in about 50 years in in their first five games so this defense is definitely carrying the squad on their backs right now special teams did do a little bit of good contribution you have darden making some nice punt returns from for some yardage that unsportsmanlike conduct penalty i think that was more of a just kind of a lapse in judgment by the 49ers gunner uh, to put the Browns in good field position, but special teams play didn't kill them. Dustin Hopkins did have the one missed field goal, but again, for the ones that he needed to make, Dustin Hopkins was solid, and this is definitely a win that I will take as an unexpected surprise uh, for the Browns, a pleasant surprise, I should say. Getting a W against the 49ers when you're down, you know, already Nick Chubb out for the season, obviously, but then you're also down your starting quarterback, Angel Batonio. And again, I do understand that the San Francisco 49ers also dealt with injuries throughout the game. They definitely had a rough time adjusting to Christian McCaffrey leaving, as I'm not sure McCaffrey was having quite like a game breaker type of game, but he was definitely taking up chunk yardage in certain plays and he did have a touchdown early in the game. It definitely stifled the run game, just not having McCaffrey there. You also had Debo Samuel kind of uh, limiting the pass game and the run game. They do use D Debo Samuel as a running back quite a bit too. So the 49ers and Browns both dealing with some injury things. The officiating was bad all around. And the Browns, again, they just find a way to win in a weird sloppy game. This is kind of a game that I I'm usually thinking about the Pittsburgh Steelers winning, where you're, just not, you're not sure how an anemic offense and just a, a killer defense and this weird circumstances and, and the gross conditions lead to a win, but somehow some way they get it done. And again, th th that's what this game kind of reminds me of. Kind of reminds me of like a, a voodoo Steelers game with how do they win that one. I'm not sure how replicable this win is, but if the Browns defense continues to uh, play the way that they've been playing against whoever they face, uh, the Ravens game was a bit of, of a lapse there, but this 49er game, they, they held the 49ers to a pretty good, uh, pretty good amount. Br Brock Purdy definitely having his worst game, at least this season, maybe perhaps in his early NFL career uh, but that's going to do it for this video let me know what you thought about this game down in the comments below make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and you'd like to see more like it once again thank you for watching if you did make it this far into it I will see you at the next one